and welcome to Liz at Home. Today I'm excited to share with you I'm going to be playing with watercolors again. I have my lovely Koi watercolors set here. Um, it's a big set which I'm quite pleased with and inside is like a palette that you can work with which I use. I've got my two pieces of kitchen paper to use. I have, let me move this, two bottles of water. So I'm going to get that out of the way. Then I have my sketchbook. It's actually my watercolour art journal sort of thing, visual journal. It's a Strathmore visual journal that I'm going to be playing in today. So my plan is to take inspiration from a Skillshare class I've been doing called Painting Modern Loose Watercolour Florals. And this was by Subhashini Narayanan, an artist. I would highly recommend that. I'll put in a link. And now I start by first drawing a vase with this watercolor pencil, which is Krita Color Merino, and it's Bremen Blue. And I'm just going to sketch the vase with that. So starting with a slight lip thingy like I want it to be fairly wide so I can fit I'm hoping to do I think five flowers in this today and just to give you an idea of a great way to play with your watercolor practice as you're practicing so that's the bottom and then I make a kind of a curve there and a curve there. I hope this is all right. Okay. Excuse the quick transition after drawing the vase. I had done the next video drawing the flowers, uh, not drawing, painting the flowers, and I started editing my video only to discover that that particular part of the video, because I do them all in small sections, and that particular part of the video became corrupted, so I couldn't use it, and I actually wanted to show you how I did the painting of the flowers because I think they're lovely little whimsical flowers and I thought it would be a fun thing for people to do and probably do far better than me. Um, so now I'm going to redo the flowers but just the flowers um, standing on their own not in the vase because the painting is finished. Um, so this is kind of a return and a carry on as we go. So I was so upset, so I have my friendly cup of tea to get me going. And I'm going to start. The first one I do, my husband keeps telling me that, no, it doesn't look like a poppy. And I keep telling him it's not supposed to be anything in particular. These are abstract flowers. And they're kind of reminiscent of other flowers, but they're not... I'm not good enough at painting or drawing or anything to make them like that. So this first one is a play on wet on wet. And I'm just going to speak you through it. So I first make a circle in a very, very pink. I first tried doing it in plain water, but I couldn't actually see where I'd put it. So a very plain, let me get a bit more light here. A very plain circle and then I don't want it to have puddles so I'm lifting a bit drying off what I do is lift it and dry that off on my paper towel and lift those puddly bits off there we are and now I've mixed up some of carmine and um, Madder, a Crimson Lake, Carmen and Crimson Lake that I've mixed together there. And I'm going to drop that in and sort of let the paint do its own thing, help it a little bit around the circle. 
because that's where I want it to go. And then I'm going to leave it a bit to play in the water and develop by itself. Whoopsie. I wanted it to be a kind of a circle. So this is going to look slightly different to, to the one that's in the painting because each time you do something with watercolors, the water does its own thing. My next one, so that was using the number six brush. My next one, I'm using my thin number two brush and I'm going to, I first want to just wet the paints a little bit. I'm going to be using um, some of the yellows. So this one is, I've got my little swatch chart here, permanent yellow deep. So I'm just going to want to wet some of these and the orange and a bit of that red there. So let me bring this here so you can see what I'm doing. So this is the permanent yellow deep. I'm just using what was left on my palette. And I've got a bit of brown there and I'm going to just mix that in to kind of slightly dull down this yellow. And then I think it's more or less the color I wanted to start with. And now I'm going to be using this little size two brush. And again, I'm doing circles and I love this flower. Um, so basically, oops, I forgot, sorry. I do find it difficult talking and painting. Um, so again, we make a circle and this time I'm using plain water, which is quite difficult to see. So I put it at a slight angle. See, keep opening my curtain. Oh, I can't see. I've got the light on and the curtain and I can't see where I've got this water. Okay, so there's a circle in plain water. And then I'm taking this little size two brush. Got that there, dipped it in water, putting it in the paint, making sure it's fairly well loaded, taking off some of that paint and then trying to find my wet circle and dropping in dots around the outside of the circle. And it makes a kind of a puffball flower if you've got enough water down to start with, which maybe I didn't have. So I'm just going to add a bit more there. Um, and then you continue dropping in. You need to work fairly quickly so that the water doesn't dry and go around in the circle and then take a contrasting color so you can go in the painting I went with bronze now I'm going to actually use this pinky rose that I used there and drop that in in between and I think that'll be quite pretty mixing with the yellows and then you can see with the wet on wet technique it kind of starbursts and reminds one of those little puffball flowers that you get and then wait until you're happy so now i just want a slightly deeper color so i'm using this is still a permanent yellow deep so i'm going to just take a bit of permanent orange um, and mix that in as well just around and then again leave it to play it's like allowing your kids freedom to express themselves i found when my children were little 
it was very hard not to tell them every day exactly what they need to do. Then the next flower, I'm just going to wet up some of this lilac here. I can't remember what color I did. It's very simple to start with. You just make like a puff ball, three kind of petals. And you can leave that bit of white if you decide to, because it's a nice highlight, the little bit that I've got standing there. So that's the next flower. The next flower, again, these are all simple, but even with them being simple, I must say, this is about the sixth time I'm doing them. Nothing comes easily to me, but I don't find it work. I love painting and trying to do. So now I'm taking some indigo blue for the next flower, which I actually love. And you start it with doing, again, little dots, but this is on dry. Um, so I'm making like a little circle of dotty things. And then you can use a contrasting color. So I will probably go with some of that purple mixed. I love kind of just mixing up colors and maybe I'll even bring in a little bit of the indigo there. Hope that's dark enough just to give a slight contrast in these puffball in these little dotties. And once that's done, this is again the size two brush. Then take the color that you're going to make the flower in the bigger brush. And I'm going to go with this purpley one, quite a pale one here. I think I'm going to make it a bit more of a wash. But then to make sure that the brush, sorry, I'm mixing it off screen again. To make sure that the brush is not dripping, I dab it off again on my piece of paper, kitchen towel. And then you just make little petals and let them fall down from there. So you put the point of the brush down, get it down to the belly of the brush and lift it up. Aim the direction, lift it up, lift it up. And this one's a bit funny, so I'm turning my paper a bit and I just want it in the right direction. Point down and there we go. And while it's wet, if you want to, you can drop in. I'm going to drop in a bit of contrasting deeper blue and see what happens just for... Let it play, see what happens. So now we're back on the original video I started with. I'm applying stems and leaves with a fine pointed brush, fine tipped brush. As you can see, it's the same style of flowers, just different colors to what I demonstrated earlier. I would like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And I would also like to encourage you to leave a comment. And if you, there's something you'd like me to do a video on, I'd really love to hear from you. I'm going to put some music on now to get to the end of this video because I think this is enough of my voice. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the video.